If you're struggling with addiction, then listen up. Addiction means that it is not quenching your thirst. Now, some of you might be thinking alcohol, pornography, things like that. No, but even social media can be a, an addiction. An energy drink can be an addiction. You want more of it. You want more of it. I remember a time when I was so addicted to 7-Up. So addicted. Oh, my God. Like, every time I went to the supermarket, I would just see it like this and I'd be like, I want a 7-Up. And I used to buy it so much until when, at some point, I said, no. I just stopped. Anyway, addiction means it can't quench your thirst. Social media. You want more of it in the morning. You wake up in the morning, it's the first thing you're going on. Before you go to bed, you're on social media. Addiction. Addiction means it's not quenching your thirst. You want more of it. When you're thirsty for water, by the time you're being thirsty, it means that you're already dehydrated. It means that there's something that is missing. There's something that is missing. You're already dehydrated. But if you take water at certain intervals, then you will not feel thirsty. Sometimes it, the addictions that we have in our lives are because we are dehydrated of something. There's something that we are dehydrated of and, and, and we are trying to fill it up with something else that is not really filling up. When you're thirsty for water and you drink soda, you don't, the thirst doesn't go away. You actually want to take more and more and more and more. Why? Because soda does not quench thirst. It is only water that quenches thirst. I want to tell you a story, a story about a woman at a well. In John chapter 4, I'm going to be reading from the NLT. If I look away, I'm reading. I'm reading here on my computer. John chapter 4, verse 1 to 38. So brace yourself. Get ready. This is a story of the Samaritan woman at the well. I'm reading and then we talk. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. What was he trying to run away from them or something? Anyway, I don't know what the the, 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 the the essence of that is. But let's continue. In case you know, please put, please put in the comments. I'm also learning. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Saika, near the field that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well, about noon time. Can you imagine? Jesus was a human being. 100% God, 100% man. He was thirsty for physical water. He was thirsty. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. Now this is where the drama starts. Eh? Please give me the what? Give me a what? Give me a drink. Verse 8 says that he was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. I was asking myself the question, so did the disciples discover this story? Probably Jesus told them the story because there were only two. Jesus was with the, with the Samaritan woman. The woman was surprised. Verse 9, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Something has just hit me. This particular a text, John chapter 4, verse 1 to 38, is actually about discipleship. And and guess what? This particular uh, verse, verse uh, 9, is saying that the woman was surprised for the, for the Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? In other words, Jesus was about making disciples of everyone. Remember when he was send, sending out his his disciples, he told them that you start in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the world. In other words, make disciples of all the nations. You're not leaving out even one person. Every single person has to become a disciple. Anyway, Jesus replies, verse 9, the woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replies, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Jesus is promising this woman living water. But guess what? Jesus has just asked the woman for a drink of water. Now remember, he asked the woman for physical water. My camera is moving, but we keep going. 
physical water. Whatever you're thirsting for is a physical thing. Alcohol is a physical thing. Pornography is a physical thing. Social media is a physical thing. Sometimes we think that the physical things are the ones which are going to fill up the thirst that we have for God. The reason why you're running all over the place, this woman, we're going to read very, 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 very shortly here where Jesus is talking to her about the number of husbands that she has. She moves from one husband to another, to another, thinking that those people are going to satisfy that thirst, which only Jesus can give. Let's continue. The woman asks her, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. She said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you are better, you are greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? She is so convinced that they have the best water because the water came from her their fathers. Sometimes we think that the things we have inherited from our fathers are much better than what Jesus has to offer, my friend. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Verse 13, Jesus replies, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. In other words, the water, the physical water that Jesus is asking for, he's saying that anyone who drinks of it will do what? Will thirst again. Verse 14 says that, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them giving them eternal life you see that knowing god and jesus christ whom he has sent knowing the only true god and jesus christ whom he has sent is eternal life that is john 17 4 i think 17 3 something like that jesus says that he's he is giving living water which is what eternal life the woman asks in verse 15 please sir the woman said, give me this water, then I will never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. She's still thinking from a physical plane. She's still thinking, if you give me this water, I don't need to come back and, and, and get water. No, it's not true. She will still have to come to the well, but it's just that when she comes to the well this time, it will be different. She will not be looking, going around looking for husbands. She's probably going to the well because she wants to please the husband who she has left at home, who is not even her husband. Anyway, I'm going ahead of myself. But let's continue. Then Jesus says, says to her, go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you are right. You don't have a husband for you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you are living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Some scholars say that this five might be meaning the law, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the law. I don't know. What do you think? Me, I don't know. Me, I know that she's she's had five husbands and she's not satisfied. She's still looking for husbands, left, right, and center. But Jesus is saying that I have living water that when you when you take it, you'll not thirst. You'll stop running, running all over the place, running, running all over the place. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. Tell me. Why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worshipped? Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. While we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is come. Indeed, it is here now. When true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, the Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. We're talking about worship. Now she's talking about the Messiah. Anyway, let's continue. I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. <laughs> Jesus was explaining to her something, which she was she was getting it, but then she was saying, let's wait for the Messiah. To, yes, she was talking to the Messiah himself. Just then, verse 27, just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, 
What do you want with her? Oh, why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. I just remember that song. Come and see what the Lord has done. No. Anyway, could he possibly be the Messiah? Anyway, people came streaming from the village to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. I have a kind of food that you know nothing what about. You guys think that food is just physical things. The things that you're desiring, those things that you're thirsting for. That, those are not the things that are going to satisfy you. Right? When you think that, oh, my husband will satisfy me. Oh, my wife will satisfy me. You will be shocked. There's, a, there's another food that Jesus is talking about here. And let's look at it. Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You see, when you do the work that God has sent you to do, you get nourishment. You get nourishment. You will have no need for even food, just mere food. You think about it. One of the biggest needs that people have is food one of the things that people struggle with the most is food people who put on weight they struggle with food they're addicted to food but just do the will of the father you will become so nourished that you'll have no need for physical food go out and make disciples go out and evangelize go out and bring back the souls like what i'm doing right now the people who are watching me right now and they have not yet received the life of christ Today is a good day. Hang in there. Stay there. Stay there. We're still digging. We're still digging. And, uh, and after that, we're going to harvest. Uh, let's finish. Verse 35. It says that, you know the saying, four months between planting and harvesting. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The fields are already ripe for harvest. People are ready to enter into the kingdom of God. That's why we are ushering people into the kingdom of God. People are ready. The harvesters are paid good wages. Do you see that? The harvesters are paid what? Good wages. And the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvesters alike. Whether you've planted or you've harvested, you all get a joy. You all get a wage. God rewards you. Now, the reward is not physical. The reward is not physical. It is more than physical. In fact, part of it may manifest in the physical, but it is more than physical. If for you, you're waiting for a physical reward, my friend, you'll be disappointed. If, if you want to first be paid for you to go and evangelize, you've already received your reward. You know that, like the scripture says that when you pray, and you pray so that people can see you, that you're praying, you've already received your reward. Or when you give so that people can see you, you've already received what? Your reward. You want to do these things whereby it's only God who knows that you're the one who is, you're, 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 you're bringing people into the kingdom. Now, I was talking about thirst from the beginning. The only, only person that can give you water that so that you will never thirst for the thing that you're craving for, the thing that you've failed to say no to, is Jesus is jesus now in this video the next one in fact look in the link in the description click on that link and go and pray that prayer that's a prayer to receive salvation pray that prayer to receive salvation today 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 and your thirst will be quenched your thirst will be quenched that addiction will be no more i declare it and i know it that that's what's gonna happen it will be no more god bless you